very good evening all of you who have joined the webinar it's a pleasure to have you all at the mentorx webinar so basically uh, today we have a very interesting panel discussion wherein we are going to take up the topic uh, women lead design the fusion of art architecture and interiors now here we have a very esteemed panels uh, panelists with us who are going to take this uh, topic discussion forward with all of you today and enlighten you on various aspects of architecture art and designs and of course interiors and however before i introduce you with the keynote speakers today in the panel i would like to first of all introduce myself well i am neeru sood and uh, i am basically a brand and business consultant and i am uh, pleased to be a part of today's mentorx webinar not only this uh, i am also pleased to you know uh, hold this panel discussion discussion with keynote speakers like ms chandrika sahai mrs smriti malhotra and dr sangeeta ahuja so it's a pleasure uh, for me to introduce each one of them uh, so first of all uh, i would like to wed warmly welcome uh, ms chandrika sahai who is director and principal architect of miraki design hello chandrika hello could you unmute yourself uh, chandrika please unmute hi hi thank you so much <laughs> sorry hi. not a problem so uh, just to give us warm introduction of chandrika she has been leading a firm called miraki designs and you know she is the director and principal architect there though she'll be telling you more about her but let me just take you through some of her you know prime things of her profile she is primarily uh, doing a very very interesting projects with educational institutions with uh, you know hospitals with the uh, nursing homes with uh, she has done pan india or various projects pan india and also in gulf region and you know she has a very well defined team who is associated with her and she has been working very closely with them to delegate and proficiently work with her clients and if i go in greater details she has over 18 years of national and international experience in the field of architecture and after completing a variety of projects she has carved a niche for herself in sectors like hospitality corporate interiors and architecture not only this uh, she has been associated across projects you know to in india as well as gulf region and she if we have a look at her educational background she is a bachelor of architecture from ms university baroda and she founded uh, miraki designs directing all aspects of design strategy and quality herself she also manages operations including project management and client service not only this she has gained a lot of acclaim by winning lot of accolades recognition for herself and we are proudly having a, her here at this platform so very warm welcome thank you thank you so much for the lovely introduction thank, thank you thank you so much <laughs> and uh, now i would like to uh, welcome our esteemed panelist mrs smriti malhotra a very pleasant personality once again and uh, just to take you through her profile she started her career as an hr and trainings manager with tcs in chennai and thereafter adopting many roles in tcs you know she had a creative quest to start something of her own you know as a entrepreneur and thereafter she gave birth to her venture called vault art in the year 2010 and uh, this vault art is basically a pioneer name in hand crafting brass copper steel into artworks installations and sculptures and uh, you know she has been working very closely with architects interior designers and various clients of hers to you know meet their expectations with respect to design and to make their spaces beautiful and you know so that our cultural heritage is also given due importance in the same and not only this she has been adorning residential and commercial spaces over a decade now so that's a immense amount of experience that she carries and uh, she has been working from farmhouses to hotels to residential projects and to 
I'm sure commercial projects across India and internationally. So a very warm welcome to Smriti, who's a born seeker and who dreams of hosting her art pieces in international art federations as well, and dreams of making Vault Art a recognizable global organization. So we wish you all the best in your efforts and endeavors. So we warmly welcome you, Smriti. Thank you so much, Niru. We welcome you to this platform. Thank you so much for a very, very flattering bio. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. So first you educated me, now I am educating you. <laughs> so this is nice. Now coming on to uh, our esteemed panelist number three, Dr. Sangeeta Ahuja, who is not just a panelist, but also the chairperson of MentorX Women platform. And to warmly introduce uh, Mrs. Sangeeta Ahuja, uh, you know, I have had my association in the last few months with her. First of all, the first and very important sentence is that she's a very warm and very, very warm human being. So in nutshell, first and foremost, I would like to welcome her uh, warmly with a applause. Thank you, Dr. Sangeeta Uja. Now, um, she is an interior designer who has been working on luxury interior projects, has been understanding the needs of her clients, customers, and has been, you know, trying to give them happy spaces to live in, to work in. And she tries to match to the best of their needs, but at the same time, she tries to make their spaces more lively and happy. Not only this, she has been uh, aligning and lightening with various vendors who are into art, artifact, you know, artifacts and handicrafts and trying to give their the clients uh, the best from various fields. She has been doing lots of projects pan India and today she has almost 20 years of long experience. She has uh, gained lots of awards, accolades, has given started giving, giving back to the community by associating herself with the NGOs, by associating herself with community service organizations. Not only this, she has now started, you know, chairing uh, MentorX Women with the spirit of uplifting and, you know, elevating women in different fields and educating and mentoring them as well. So I would like to congratulate her for all the efforts that she is making, especially for women, because, you know, that will really help we as women to come up in our lives and co-create things and co you know, co-create and co-jointly basically, you know, manage things in different fields and also become successful there. So a very warm welcome to Dr. Sangeeta Uja. And um, thereafter, I would like to start with uh, our panel discussion. But prior to that, we are waiting for um, our uh, uh, host, prime host, who is the founder, founding president of uh, Mentorex, Dr. Munish Jindal. And we are also waiting for Dr. Nancy Juneja to join us, who is the co-founder of Mentorex team. So, uh, Dr. Sangeeta Uja, uh, are they here? Uh, I think just give us two minutes more. Okay. We have another session going on, so they'll be joining us soon. So, otherwise, I'll just give a brief introduction on the topic of discussion. Uh, I think uh, you can carry on with the Mentrix introduction right now. For women Mentrix also, you can discuss. Sure, sure, definitely. So, Mentrix is basically, uh, I would like to tell each one of you that Mentrix is something very encouraging. And in the times of COVID, when, you know, we are not able to have live sessions, uh, direct meetings, direct sessions, public speaking sessions and seminars and educational programs, Mentrix plays a very, very important role because it is such a platform which is bringing the trainers and the trainees together on a single platform. Now, I would like to explain it a bit. Basically, Mentrix is trying to liaison with not only educationists, but also with uh, industry specialists, corporate leaders, advocates, diplomats, you know, various experts in their respective fields, so as to ensure that uh, they are able to, you know, lead this program, lead the programs of online education, not just with students, but upcoming youth, but upcoming, you know, entrepreneurs, startup companies, various industries, various companies, teachers, online coaches, 
tutor so various category of people can benefit from the programs which are going to be started very shortly on in different industries and different uh, skill sets by mentrix now mentrix is an organization which is trying to bring people uh, together basically on a single platform for not only various industries but also from various um, i would say various countries it's a global platform today it's a, uh, you know it's having a presence in more than 30 countries including india australia you know gulf countries vietnam just to name a few and apart from that also it is spreading its wings in other countries very soon and very shortly so uh, i would like to congratulate the founding team of mentorex uh, dr nancy juneja dr munish chindal and of course dr sangeeta ahuja who has also joined hands with the founding team now for their efforts and endeavors and mentorex is doing a great job we must say and all of us feel proud to be associated with mentorex so uh, this is a big round of applause for uh, mentorex so i'm trying to make it as live as possible uh, <laughs> apart from that um i would also like to take this um, uh, you know um privilege to especially introduce the sister initiative of the core mentrex team which is mentrex women now why it is very close to my heart while talking about it because i am myself a girl i am myself a woman so you know the thing is that uh, we women being multitaskers being uh, you know over occupied with tasks with the uh, things in life with responsibilities in life it becomes imperative that you know we get such platforms where people understand where human beings understand that these women could have equal amount of dreams and aspirations and you know to in order to accomplish those dreams and aspirations one thing is that they leave all the responsibilities and one thing is that that the co partner with their uh, you know husbands and with their life partners and actually bring these accomplishments into you know fold now the thing is that uh, uh, mentorix is uh, mentorix women is a platform which is trying to give women opportunities to meet people in their respective industries to collaborate with women which are related to each other in their respective fields so that their business objectives and the accomplishments become easier for them you know it is not that they will uh, they will offer direct business but the accomplishment route the route to achieve the same will become much easier for women not only this they will feel self driven they will feel self motivated they will feel energetic enough to come up to such platforms to further educate and empower other women from the streams so this is extremely and equally important so mentrix women is led by dr sangeeta ahuja and the global chairperson of mentrix women is dr nancy juneja so both of them are steering this initiative my heartiest congratulations to both of them for coming forward for such an initiative because you know such initiatives they re really demand lots of hours working hours from you apart from anything else mm -hmm. you know you really need to bring out that time then only you can actually devote so much of attention and time to a venture to make it successful so my heartiest congratulations to both the leading ladies uh, as far as this venture is concerned not only this uh, today in our esteemed panel also we have bright and cheerful and you know very well qualified women mrs smriti malhotra and ms chandrika sahai once again welcoming them and just to give brief thank, thank you. you so just to give you a brief on the topic of discussion today we are going to discuss something from the field of you know decor design architecture art and how does integration of all these is extremely important for anybody who is designing or anybody who is getting a space designed for both of them whether it is the professional end or it is the taker end right so uh, we are trying to tell here on this platform that why it is an extreme import is of it is of extreme importance that how will an architect plan
first and how will an architect then integrate the various artifacts art pieces paintings you know various installations various fixtures and various if amalgamations of the concepts will happen and not only this uh, uh, while amalgamating the same keeping the core theme keeping the requirements keeping the taste keeping the interest of the client very much in mind and still delivering within the timelines still de delivering within the cost committed still delivering within the turnaround time that was initially committed where when the architect was also not aware that how much time it may take to procure you know everything together so this is how uh, you know we are going to discuss this the significance of art significance of design significance of coordination significance of collaboration significance of skills significance of all this in the field of architecture and development so i would like to uh, you know uh, just confirm give me a second to confirm that whether dr munish jindal has joined or not so that you know we can uh, he can actually uh, uh, warmly welcome everyone and we can get started so dr sangeeta is he here i think another 5 minutes is just finishing one session okay so uh, before we start uh, dr sangeeta would you like to add something to mentrix women initiatives first i really want to say thank you to you actually you making it more uh, really warm and vibrant the way you know actually had visualized the entire <laughs> and uh, thank you to the panelists thank you so yeah. much ms chandrika thank you smriti thank you. and uh, of course a big thank you to mentrix mentrix global uh dr jindal and dr nancy for you know helping us get to this point that where we have an kind of platform with us so uh, i think all goes very well and all of us can just put up a point of view in front of each other and discuss the actual roots of what is happening behind the scenes because our world is very glamorous so people have a notion that you know we're living a designer's life but when we actually start speaking about our notions and everyday routines there is so much happening behind the scenes so the initial idea came that you know let us just start discussing what is happening so that whatever is in our heart or we feel you know like global dimensions or as new strategies we should implement as per women also so that the society becomes more healthy for us to work because we've had our challenges for almost 20 years as freelance designers because i am sure she was also working as a freelance so she uh, she would understand what uh, you know the kind of uh, challenges we face every day so you start making a niche for yourself so within that niche at times you skip certain points which are needed so today i think uh, the kind of discussions positive discussions we will have it will surely open new uh, chapters for everyone correct so Dr. Sangeeta has, uh, you know, guided us on this. So, is Dr. Jindal here? I think so. Yes, yes, yes. yes. A very warm welcome to Dr. Munish Jindal, the founding president of Mentrex team. Uh, my congratulations for founding such a great initiative, Dr. Munish, and a warm welcome to Dr. Nancy Juneja as well, who is the global chairperson. of uh, mentrex women so uh, i would like to invite dr munish jindal to welcome us all and then i can briefly introduce uh, his bio as well uh, guys um, i don't know wait a second Am I on you? Yes, am I audible to all of you? Yes. Yes. One. Wow. Uh, namaste to everyone. Very warm good evening. Wow. Thank you, Neeruji, for a such kind welcome. 
and uh, so certain times you feel good getting welcomed at your own platform. So uh, indeed, kind to you. So such lovely smile. Wow! Today we have such wonderful people around. Mrs. Samriti Malhotra, Miss Chandrika Sahai, Miss Neeru Sood, and obviously our very own Dr. Sangeeta Malhotra. Along, so I very heartedly welcome all of you along with the uh, Juneja and yes, as well as. The one, the, uh, Miss Pyler, who looks up the entire back end. She's the CX of MentorX. A very warm good evening and very warm welcome to all of you, all the wonderful people. And I'm so glad that you joined all of us at such short notice with just some, uh, and it's indeed a privilege and uh, indeed honor to, to get connected with all of you. Such wonderful faces, such beautiful smiles, too much of goodness and happiness around. And wow. What a, what a wonderful, uh, you know, a thought process, women-led design. Women, they create life. They are the ones who create this universe, who make this universe, and who give us to life. And now, today, we are doing this women-led design, the fusion of art, architecture, and interiors. It's indeed wonderful. What a brainchild idea by Dr. Sangeeta Hoja. And uh, wonderful people who have joined us. And I'm thankful to our wonderful audience as well. Remarkable, incredible clan of MentorX who join us every day for wonderful different various summits. So yes, at MentorX, we are doing various good things. We started it with the vision to educate, to empower, to elevate people. People talk about empowering women. I say that women are already empowered. They don't need any kind of empowerment. The only thing they require is a little bit of spark because they wear multiple hats. They are the daughters, they are the mothers, they are the wives, you know, they are the corporate people. They are the entrepreneurs, they run the economy. So, so many hats, so many things. Certain times what happen is during the adjustments and sacrifices, the, all they need is a little bit of spark. And so today we are here with so many wonderful women to inspire others. I can see Anju Kumari ji as well. Very warm uh, welcome to you. So it's indeed great. Whatever we are doing here, uh, that is what the Mentrex vision and mission is. To touch lives. As of now, we are present in 32 countries. The vision is to be in 200 countries. And when I'm talking about touch lives, lives of 8 billion people around. Like to touch life of each and everyone. And we are going through a lockdown, a pandemic. And in the pandemic itself, we have done close to 300 plus summits. And touch lives of close to 2 million people in a span of the past four months. And you know how this got possible? This has got possible because of all of you. The people, the wonderful people like all of you around. I'm just a face. I get dressed up, wear a tie get on a camera, speak for a few minutes, but the entire work done is by work with the people like you who are sitting by our side, who make things happen. So we are coming up with a lot more, uh, like uh, the new education policy has been declared. Mentrex has, is coming up with, uh, has launched its own school of learning, whereby we are coming up with a uh, lot many vocational courses. The first one being, uh, you know, design thinking and interior as well under the able leadership of Dr. Sangeeta Hoja. Then we are bringing entrepreneurship, artificial intelligence that will be taken by me, life skills by, under the able leadership of Dr. Nancy Juneja. And yes, there is a much more to it. Our global solidarity sisterhood initiative, a mass movement whereby we're connecting women with women. You know, I've realized, I don't know, I've been past four or five years, I've been part of so many multiple women summits. Women remain more happy with their own company. They form their pride, you know. <laughs> So uh, there is, that's why there is a sisterhood uh, solidarity movement that uh, is the underlaid able um, guidance of Dr. Nancy Juneja and Dr. Sangeeta Hoja. We are nurturing, taking it uh, globally in each and every country, each and every state, each and every city. Women connecting women, nurturing each other, nurturing the economy, making things happen. Each and I believe each and every woman, she holds the universe inside her and she can command that in the entire universe to make anything happen. So that's, um, on that note, I won't take much of your time because uh, today we are here to uh, hear to Sumrit Mulhota ma'am, Chandrika Sahai ma'am, Neeru Sood ma'am and Dr. Sangeeta Hoja. I would uh, uh, love to pass on to, from here to Dr. Nancy Juneja, co-founder of MentorX. And I would just quickly love to hear her golden words and the golden nuggets quickly. Thank you. Namaste. And welcome to all of you at the platform. Thank you.
Namaste, namaste. Deeply humble, Dr. Jindal, and uh, I'll feel namaste to each and everyone who joined us here at the platform of uh, MentorX Women. It feels indeed an honor to welcome you all at such a spiritual uh, day of Janmashtami. And you know, it's all the more good when women are coming together, supporting each other, creating a benchmark in society. I'll just say, you know, there are two kinds of people in the life. Those who walk into the room and, you know, say, well, I'm here. And there are some who walk into the room and the people say, oh, are you, you there? So, you know, we are the kind of the women who are present here in the room, in the Zoom auditorium today. I feel hats off to each and every one. I know some of them. I'm knowing some of them prof uh, via profile for the first time too. And I would love to say that during, uh, you know, my journey of life, I've come across all of you who are not just the homemakers, but who are the corporate buddies, who are working professionals, who are managing it all. And, you know, the duality of the women, the way you are managing it, Hats off to each one of you, including a pat on my back, as I'm also doing the same. And I'll just say that we all, we all have everything, as rightly put by Dr. Jindal. The word woman empowerment doesn't stand anywhere. We are the empowered lot. Rather, empower means I am empowered. So today, I'm so happy to see the people who are just doing, you know, following their passion, following their gut feelings, doing amazing in their vocation. And... Today is a wonderful day when we are knowing much about the architect art and interiors. It's a beautiful field. So you're not just beautiful inside out, you're making every place beautiful, which is associated by you. So we look forward to uh, the esteemed panelists and over to you, Niruma. Thank you. Uh, Nancy. Okay, so uh, it's nice to see you, Nancy, uh, after a long time today. Shortly. See you. It's been a pleasure seeing you all. Thank you. So uh, I will start with the topic. As I uh, discussed already, I would like to repeat it once again. We are today discussing the topic called significance of architecture, art and design and significance of integration of all these three elements of, uh, you know, a profession wherein very uh, highly skilled people are working together with each other. So, uh, the first and foremost question is uh, to Mrs. Chandrika Sahai, where I would like to have her inputs. That, ma'am, how do you think that architecture, art, and design, you know, what is the significance of each and every element called architecture, art, and design in a particular project which you deliver to a client? Well, uh, they're very, very integral. I think no space is complete without the other. And the architecture in itself is such an iconic thing. We are a field that has one foot in art and one foot in science. And you can't segregate the two. I mean, when you are doing any project and you're integrating a structural consultant, you have to have an art artist also to collaborate to bring about that project. Um, so it is very, very integral. When you start off with a building concept idea, it of course is finished with the interiors and the Artwork. Artwork, I wouldn't say it's just a painting on the wall like behind me. Artwork could be anything from sculptures to, uh, you know, something in the water feature you could incorporate, be it on a wall. It's not just the framed artwork that has to come in. And if you look at it traditionally also in our buildings, so you look at all our vernacular architecture, or you go back to the Bhuns in Gujarat, to the frescoes of uh, 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 Havelis, they're all artists working with the building. It's all collaboration. They've been happening for years in our country. So why is this something that we're not taking forward? I mean, it's not a new topic. It's been going on for centuries in our country. Okay, very nice, ma'am. So basically, you are trying to say that uh, 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 an architect cannot work uh, in isolation. Is not that so? Absolutely. It's a very collaborative process. Any building built is not a single person. It has yes. a team of people working behind it. And it is so collaborative. I mean, it's, it's not just one head. It is when the 10 heads get together that you come up with the final product, Correct. which any, and it's basically the end users to experience it. So it is a very, very collaborative process. And I'm saying that it's collaborative, not just with the sciences, it should also be collaborative with the arts. So ma that's when the balance happens. How is architecture different from design? If, uh, you know, a lay person has to understand this, how is architecture 
or planning different from designing a home let's say a residential apartment how uh, an architect works and how a designer works and how is it different from each other so this is a very fine difference because uh, architecture is also one of the design fields like the many design fields it has a more science to it it has more it's the basic shell that you start off with the building right it's the built or the unbuilt space where the others also come in and fill it but it it is just more technicality but the design process from conceptual from understanding the client brief to the concept design to taking it forward to execution is all then that's when it hands on to the interiors the interior team comes in they design the spaces further which is more specific so a building could be a more like say it's a school it's a general or it's an institution or a commercial building it's a it caters to a brief to to many house many people within it eventually right. that personalization would come with the interiors right, right. if it's a, if it's a condominium your personal home would be then by the interiors so there's a little more personalization that comes in with that process so it just it's it is a flow of things from one to the other but all have to come together for the final end product okay sure so i get your point completely but are all the architects working like this or in the present scenario uh, do you see that all the architects are having these skill sets to work like this that they are closely collaborating with designers they are closely collaborating with artisans they are closely co- collaborating with other you know people who are from different fields in order to bring that finer end product is it that that every architect has that level of sincerity to you know work like this or if one is sincerity question second is you know whether he has that knowledge and skill set to do that are the is the current generation uh, you know being uh, equipped like that the ones who are studying architecture so uh, there are multiple questions you asked so yes they should be doing that because yeah. i think as architects our role is a lot bigger than just meeting the client brief there's a social social responsibility to us also if you look yes. at any built spaces or any city it is recognized by its built spaces so it's not something you're building just for your client and getting your fee you're building something iconic that's going to be there on the city skyline so you have a social obligation to the community also which is why it is important to have that vision and to collaborate the more people you bring into uh, you bring more lot of localization you encourage more artisan and crafts which need your support so it's important to have that are our education system doing that well i hope people have that vision because somewhere people are getting misdirected and are not taking it forward but i think you have that exposure i won't say that we don't have it but it's like i largely say it's your vision or your passion to drive it through that is going to take it so sometimes are there challenges coming up of uh, a client wanting to finish the work very soon and you know uh, he may be in a rush to uh, you know complete a project within a particular timeline and within a particular budget that you feel that you are not doing justice of that collaboration or you feel that the client's budget is not allowing you or the timeline is not allowing you See, there are always constraints to any project, and I won't say constraints. That is the the brief. The budget is also part of the brief. The timelines are also part of your brief. It's not just a physical requirement. I need tech, tech, tech spaces, and uh, any project has to work towards that. But yes, there are certain times project delays or something. But as long as you are working together, and they are in the loop of how things are happening. But yes, we. I mean, uh, it is like I said, a collaborative process, and always when we consider art. or designs coming from the conceptual stage it makes okay. a huge difference because then it's integrated and you're taking it forward if it's an afterthought later on of course it would have reasons why you have to support it and back it okay sure so chandrika there is a small question from one of our uh, like you know webinar participants nilima who is wanting to ask you how important it is to bring back sustainability into the field of architecture do you think it is possible really in modern times i think one question is why did we lose sustainability if you look at our vernacular buildings they were all very sustainable buildings it is unfortunately that we are taught that the hut is a kacha house and a cement and concrete building is a pakka house but if you look at our traditional architecture like i keep mentioning the bond it's very very sustainable in our vernacular thing it's made of the local material there 
and it works for the local climate. It encourages the local craft. Uh, it is this westernization or this thing of a pakka house that we need to have concrete beams, we need to have glass facades, that we have kind of digressed from it. So of course, sustainability is required because it's, it, you, you have this earth is ours. There's only one earth and there's so much you can use it. So you've got to give back to the earth. And yes, it is possible. It is definitely possible in modern times. In fact, now with the use of technology, it's even better. You have that to leverage, to bring back sustainability, be more energy conscious and to create more net zero buildings. Okay. So thank you. I hope Nilima's uh, question has been answered. Uh, Nilima, in case you have more queries, you can pen down here in the chat box. Uh, now, my next question is, uh, you know, uh, to Mrs. Smriti Malhotra. Uh, Mrs. Smriti, I would like to ask you that, um, you know, how is it important, you know, the how can you contribute towards this uh, objective of collaboration and, you know, amalgamation to a design, you know, how have you been helping architects and designers so that they make and create beautiful spaces, you know, which are looked upon by people. Uh, thank you so much, Neeru. Uh, I think Chandrika pretty much laid the foundation for what, uh, you know, I would be Absolutely. able to light on. Uh, you know, design, I always feel, can actually be holistically portrayed uh, by the creator, whoever has created it, and mm -hmm. felt by the observer only uh, if it touches all the senses. And that's very, very important. Uh, once you go into move into a particular room or say a hotel, you get a, a particular ambience and then that soothes your senses. And a lot of things play a role in that. So, and that can happen if, you know, if the walls, the furniture, the furnishings, the trims, lighting, the color palette, all of this go hand in hand and then they project a common theme. So uh, if I, you know, kind of consider the Art Deco, for example, the Art Deco revolution that started little around about World War I, uh, globally, it changed the complete uh, neoclassical form, not just in the cuts and silhouettes, but the prints, shapes, colors, everything evolved. And why to actually go uh, the borders across? If you see the Indian art history also, that dates back to around, say, about 2500 BC, around the Indus civilization, the paintings, they were there during that form in terms of often inspired by spirituality, sensuality, and, you know, all this art was already existing. So if you see the uh, great Sanchi Stupa, if you see the uh, iconic Ashoka pillar, all of these are infused innately with the, this architecture per se is infused so much with these sculptures. Uh, it's filled with all of that. Yes. So, uh, you know, we have been any which ways as a culture rich country, we have been using all of these infused with the design. Now, what has happened is when I say that, uh, now the thing is that we consider architecture as one thing, design as something else that comes and follows up after the architecture is done. And then comes the art, which just is used about to adorn the walls. And this is where I think a big lag is. Had they, they been kind of infused and planned right from the stage when the you know, visual thinking starts about the conceptualization of a space, then I think all these can work hand in hand and project a common theme. Okay, sure. And it definitely has a lot of advantages. I will take them on once we go up on. Sure. So uh, it's a good answer, Mrs. Smriti. Uh, and as you said, as you reinforced upon the cultural heritage part of it and how the ancient buildings have always taken art into consideration always. And you have been working and taking that heritage forward. So this is really nice to know. Now, I would like to also understand that these days, lots of people, you know, are paying uh, micro attention to Vastu, like to their own taste, like to functionality like to aesthetics so do you also take into consideration while this uh, this deciding upon the art pieces do you uh, discuss with the client uh, that what is the overall you know aesthetic requirement is important or vastu requirement is important or functionality requirement is important or budget is important i mean which are the various parameters for the selection of these artifacts and art pieces and how do you define these requirements in the very beginning of the project Okay, so uh, the way I function is, and I'm uh, more and more trying to be focused on that particular, and I'm advocating that philosophy nowadays a lot, actually, is that one, do not consider these art pieces as cost center. Okay. They, any which way is kind of really, okay, consider it a way, if you have a cake, which is very nicely done, 
a best right. of the ingredients you have and it's left on to the fact that it's not garnished it looks plain at the top uh, you will not have the urge to actually cut it and eat it so yeah. for it to look complete and full to right. be able to actually you take a bite out of it and then eat eat it taste it that is what the complete art interior and you know architecture do to a particular space so uh, coming to your question as to what parameters do we consider is are considered before you know finalizing about what art should go where uh, this really is a lot very personalized i would say so with respect to every client what he or she needs out of that particular space she is be she or he would be thriving in and also uh, what the designer intends to create out of that space out of that visual thinking because ultimately the visualization is given by the designers the the seed is born there uh, understanding what is required to be done so we definitely do consider the vastu aspect and i think most and vastu is just a science so any which ways i think all the architects do consider the air and the light and all these uh, you know parameters together when these kind of they uh, make a particular space so they are any which ways considered and uh, if a specific requirement comes of a specific material like a brass or a copper to be put in a certain direction or a certain vastu dosh is there they are definitely personalized consider uh, considers are there okay thank you so much uh, smriti now the, as you said that the seed is born at the level of the designer so my question uh, goes to uh, dr sangeeta here that uh, as smriti very well for, put forward that yes cost is not really a consideration when it comes to artifacts and art pieces and it should not be considered because without garnishing the cake doesn't look that great so similarly but that garnishing also needs to be defined you know as she put forward so i would like to ask dr sangeeta that at the design phase you know how do you um, what all things does a interior designer has to manage here in order to go to the level of like say for example decor specialist like mrs smriti or an art specialist like mrs smriti and so you are you the step number 2 after like what chandrika has delivered is it now that you will become the second uh, stage and then it will pass on to the stage 3 which is pretty so how does it flow i would like to understand this better you know, and i for everyone here when we start discussing this after listening to miss chandrika and miss smriti there is one thing which we follow yeah you know you start making your own rules and books when you are into designing and um, i have noticed one thing that the more earlier we start as a interior designer in a project the projects come out much better correct being um, you know instead of going the way that you pick up a art piece when your home is actually or a residential or a commercial building is ready is wrong the first process should be you know your feature elements which is an art should be first procured have a concept besides it so that that building belongs to that concept so this is what you know i also try and work on that same notion that first try and pick up few art pieces or certain kind of you know a concept which the house would actually or residential or a commercial building would speak of and right. then design accordingly so that the place feels little more special rather than you know just building up brick walls and then finding pieces to hang on them which Absolutely. is not justified to the art and uh, this is where miss prithi's expertise come you know when they uh, give us different kind of options and they do a deep survey in the entire market you know global market so i think uh, then it goes hand in hand so this is where today you know personally i feel collaborations as this helps correct so me sharing my experience chandrika ji sharing her experience and smriti sharing our experiences together will give us a new platform for everything absolutely thank you dr sangeeta now i see a few questions from the participants here uh, nilima yes of course you can ask more questions no worries on that even if it is not answered on this platform mentrix team will make an effort to get back to you on your queries apart from that uh, i would like to ask uh, a question which um, nilima has also given an, another example mrs smriti that is about the tanjore temple so she says that's another great example thank you nilima for your input thank you so much nilima that is actually a, a indeed a very traditional and a, yeah example to really quote what we were just quoting thanks nilima so another question coming in here from uh, sumedha 
she wants to ask what kind of technology in construction industry will be beneficial in the current scenario of covid 19 so who would like to pick this question uh, maybe chandrika if you can just throw some light absolutely absolutely so there are i mean our spaces are being impacted with the, with the virus and there are various ways to create that barrier so more open spaces outdoors we're all told that you know if you're outdoor secure with the uh, distancing is safe enough so yes this is one reason that we need to get out of our box rooms to have more of the outdoor space into our built spaces also the now that we have air conditioning our air conditioning systems the kind of filtration that you need to have is to have a hepa filter added to it which can take care of the air being recirculated into your buildings of course there are norms which are coming up of social distancing and sanitizing that is hygiene which is something I'm glad because now every Indian is going to be extra conscious of their hygiene, which we will take for granted. But mm -hmm. as a build spaces, a lot of uh, ventilation is going to be very key. Okay, sure. So uh, I hope Sumedha's question is answered. Sumedha, you can put in comments if any query is still left at your end. Um, I would like to take the next query to uh, Mrs. Smriti. Uh, Shraddha Pant wants to ask you that she, uh, she puts forward that she's also an artist and she wants to know that I, I would like to know how do you see art being accepted by people in the modern era? How do you feel that it is encouraging enough for the artists? Okay, uh, all right, uh, Sumedha, right? Sumedha answer. So it is Shraddha. It's Shraddha. Shraddha's query, yeah. All right, okay. So, Shraddha, this is for you and I think for other people also. Uh, art is something that is uh, very self uh, visualized, and you know, it, every eye has a different kind of a viewpoint to it. There is a lot of acceptability, I would say, that you know, every house, every space, every uh, commercial residential space that we talk, talk about needs that amount of garnishing that we just spoke. But now the problem is uh, the understanding that's again coming back to that art, which is infused with the design, which is more infused with the utility. When you say uh, an art that you just want to sell it and put it on a, uh, uh, you know, a wall, sometimes there is a lot of challenge because then there has to be a match. And when we say that we infuse art with design and what we do as a, a person when we design these metal artworks or we source from different artists for different paintings, etc., we understand the requirement of the client. So once the requirement of the client is understood as to what he or she wants, I mean, then there is no uh, question of being accepted or not accepted. Then it gels with what they anyways want to project. And yeah. I would say there is a lot of acceptability and especially post COVID, uh, people are realizing, uh, you know, a lot of our ancient uh, techniques of folklore art that we have, people are going back to that, maybe contemporizing it, and that's what even we are doing it, and but using it, all of that, uh, you know, they're realizing our innate Indian art also. I, I say there's a lot of scope. Can I just add to that, Smriti, if you do? So yeah. in, the, in the various design fields that we have, like, for example, in fashion, we are seeing how the Zardozri has taken a modern twist on our contemporary dresses, you're yeah, seeing Madhubani coming onto your sarees. So you have the art coming and fusing into your contemporary dresses, right? Fab India makes kurtis or has pants, which is fusing our traditional arts with the modern contemporary, which is so wearable to us today. I mean, I love draping a sari, but probably every day I can't drape a sari and go climb up the slab to check it's been done. So often I do, you know, and these materials work for us. So just like in fashion, I'm giving fashion as example, be it graphics, be it uh, architectural build spaces, be it interiors, these are all design fields. And it is, as a design field, there are a lot of uh, scope and ways and mediums to incorporate and collaborate with art and bring it in. Your jali, carving jali comes in. It could be a traditional jali or a jharoka, how you merge it into your interior spaces. It doesn't have to be a traditional Haveli theme thing. You can bring it in very modern ways. You have restaurants which are so eclectic, which are picking up pieces like this, taking certain global elements and putting it together. So it is very, very acceptable. And it's also, I think, us as our, uh, as designers, our role to encourage our local art craftsmen and take it forward, contemporize them because they cannot stay dated. See, human beings are evolving all the time. There is new technology. Even what I started off as hand drawing drafting, today we have AutoCAD and many more new softwares. Same way, they also have to evolve. And if we don't support that and encourage that, how will they be? Absolutely. Don't divide traditional versus modern. It doesn't need to be a, a divide like that. Absolutely. Now, uh, there are a few uh, 
just one small question here, Chandrika. Now, there are a few startups and companies who are working on economies of scale. As far as automated machinery, automated furniture, all these things are fixtures are there. Whereas there are much smaller players, much, uh, you know, uh, very, very smaller players, but much unique, you know, very unique concepts they are working on. So how do you balance this cost part? Because, you know, those automated fixtures and automated uh, machinery or automated uh, furniture, they'll be able to give you at a much better price for your client. Whereas My set up may not be able to give you at a better cost but it is far unique so how do you justify that to the client if uh, i can ask you do we need to justify it there is a certain luxury bespoke value to a handmade work why does it need to match up to a machine made thousand pieces thing okay. you know when there's ikea ikea is selling large pieces globally it right. is catering to a certain segment of people why does it need to compete with that one customized hand painted bookshelf i understood that that is a bespoke piece so everything yeah. has its value why do we need to justify it so as you different market segments yeah so as you mentioned uh, actually i Uttika. would just like to uh, i would just like to add in here i am yeah, glad we have people like chandrika who uh, kind of advocate this philosophy and this is very very important what she just mentioned here i really want to add here also because you know when we are talking about uniqueness here the entire thing, then there's no point of us being a designer for anybody. Right. Finishes. So we don't, if we are needed, so we are needed for uniqueness. So that right. has to be followed. So uh, as uh, Dr. Sangeeta mentioned, and as she's specializing in best pope, uh, you know, uh, artifacts, designs. So I would like to ask Dr. Sangeeta, are you working on a particular themes like contemporary, rustic, you know, some kinds of uh, ethnic, or are you doing fusion designs also? Fusion is very important. The kind okay. of culture we are surviving in fusion is very important because, you know, you have to carry forward the legacy also. And yeah. See the current scenario also, which is going on. So at yeah. the, we, we go through phases where, you know, we design houses where people have pieces which are like 40 years, 50 years old, and they have to retain those. Of course, they're not modern pieces, they're traditional pieces. And we are building up homes which are uh, very modern with, you know, the kind of automation coming in and the kind of uh, door systems, everything we are uh, engaging in. So there the fusion definitely has to be followed. Correct. Now with um, something as actually modern or traditional online. Okay. Okay. So the, these terminologies have been just created by, you know, ghost pieces, you know, we just listen to them. And honestly, when we work with real people, they don't exist. They just exist that this is A and this is B. Blend them and give me my best. Yeah, I understood. It's getting outdated also because see, today yes. we are not uh, in that lifestyle. We have, we are all globally exposed. We are leading very fast paced life or whatever you may say it. But we are Indian. This is our home. The arts and crafts, the people, the materials are us. They make us us. So it's a fusion of both. It's like I said, talking it traditional and modern that divide should not exist. Okay. And sure. we are in our own lifestyle, don't be that. We are jeans clad making khana and puris, alus and eating it. So why can't our buildings and all be like that? <laughs> right, sure, absolutely. So very, very friendly. Uh, basically, the person who's going to occupy that home or uh, you know work in that workplace, pro probably you are taking into consideration the functionality part of it to the maximum, maybe. Or aesthetics. Uh, which one would you rate? You know, aesthetics or functionality? Functionality. Both. 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 For me, functionality is the first thing. You know, you have to be. Have to be. Absolutely. If a building is not functional, there's no use. If a aesthetic there is no is limit, there is no limit. There is no limit as designers. You can do anything with any kind of material. But end of the day, if the net product is not in a usable form, or the client has to again and again look at your face that, you know, why did you design this for me? I have to maintain this. Then again, you're lost. So I think I would really go for that. And Smriti, what is your take I on this? Uh, it has to be a win-win situation. A very nice, <laughs> delicate balance of, of both. Okay. Because it has She's to be... Not, so she has to be very <laughs> careful about her. No, no, yes. But it's true. Yes. It's true. Yes. See, yes. functionality, as Dr. Singh says very rightly, if it's not functional, if the spaces are not practical, it, it's a failure. So it has to be yes. functional. 
But further to that, like I keep talking about the role that we as architects and designers have, especially in lockdown, when we are all are confined to our homes. I mean, you will see the impact the build space has to your mentality, to your well-being. So if it is, which is what we talk about cognitive design, and that's mm-hmm. where art comes in. So if it is not aesthetically pleasing, if it is not a function, it, you, it, it bothers you. It, it, it hampers your mental development. So Absolutely. both go hand in hand and both are required out. Yeah. So uh, here a very important question, like for example, uh, Dr. Sangeeta, at times an architect is uh, working on a layout or on a plan for a residence or a commercial space and you know the architect has come up to you with that layout. So would you like to at times uh, suggest changes in the layout yes. and the structural part also? Very, very true. We do that okay. and uh, this is what uh, I think around us also we've tried that we convince the clients that Correct. The architecture interior is very important because there are a lot of spaces which are created when the build structure is being done and right. are important you know maybe just niches are important for us for storages you spoke of a designer coming in in the first go itself yes like in the first it, stage okay. it is more it is more economically viable to yes. have that come in because when you're talking about personalization it's more the client time saving is there time yes. saving cost time. saving it doesn't make sense to do something and break it off yeah. So it is both time saving and cost saving. And at the end, the interior design is personalizing that space. So they're aware, Ki, achani, I want this bathroom done in a certain way, or I want some more storage or whatever. So that when that personalization comes in, there may be some civil changes and one should be open to that. And if it can be integrated initially, why not? But why? yes, exactly. very, very rightly said. I think Chandrika also, uh, you know, once you kind of uh, take these things initially, every space has to have one focal point. So if you talk about a certain living room or if you, it's a hotel, you to talk about a certain choir area, there has to be a focal point. Now that focal point need not necessarily be created by an art piece. It can also be created by an architectural marvel. It yes. can be created by an interior, uh, uh, you know, intervention also. So once, uh, you know, all of these things are planned, that one focus can be given by either of these, you know, invariably it saves the cost because so you know, what you happens mostly is the better. Earlier, mostly it happens is that people plan the architecture and then they go about doing, uh, you know, now actually what to focus on and then the interiors and then followed by the art people. So sometimes so much of overlap happens. It should be be actually one next to the each other. So everybody, three of them should put their minds together and then uh, carve out spaces which kind of uh, emphasize on each of these things individually and bring a balance. So I feel so encouraged and uh, motivated by the kind of cross discussions you're having, you know, in your field that clearly speaks about your expertise in your respective fields. So thank you so much for making it so very interactive. Now there's one question coming up from Ram Sharma. Now he says, I am a furniture manufacturer and I have a question. What are the most important factors for designers and architects when selecting furniture for a project? The material, the budget, the quality, or the durability. So once again, uh, I think who would like to okay? Dr. The Sakeem. budget. The yeah. budget is the first thing. You know, it changes the entire thing. It's yeah. at times the designs fail. At times, nothing else matters. The budget is the first thing which will ever come, and then the later everything can follow. So budget is one thing which everybody should keep in mind for sure. I should have planned a buzzer today, you know. <laughs> I, I, know I, feel, uh, I feel, Dr. Sangeeta, uh, you just said budget. But I think what you're probably trying to say is, if I'm putting it right, uh, understanding Sangeeta closely now, that uh, uh, it's value for money. Yes. Yeah, you know, budget is a very, uh, uh, it is a very relative word. And again, value for money is something that's e- a little more, uh, subjective, I would exactly. say. Exactly. You know, I but think, within yeah. regard to the person asking the question would correlate to my answer with the <laughs> word. Yeah, I understood completely why because see, a value for money is pretty won't it come at a later stage when the object or the artifact or the furniture piece or the thing arrives at the, you know, home or the office. Will it come at a later stage or a value for money will be perceived at the first stage and then realized at the later stage? So how does okay, it? Okay, so once you once you once you go about uh, you, once <laughs> yeah, you go about a, uh, buying uh, uh, say about a Louis Vuitton bag for yourself, you already have that social value that will add on to your uh, you know uh, your personality or your you know, image per se. So that's right. the same amount of social value on and of course the aesthetic and the functional value that the piece of furniture adds on to a space. 
and i think they are kind of perceived way before you make the purchase and that's what actually rides and uh, you know decide decide that acts as a deciding factor for your purchase okay. and that is very relatively different for all of us so there right. is the value for money is also a very subjective word very subjective and i think it purely depends upon the tastes and interests of the person who's taking a call finally right isn't it yeah. i mean uh, whether he would like to go an extra mile on expenditure also maybe he Must, wants to go at a later me and mark my words on this mm -hmm. designers and you know professionals have just two things design and time if you are able to convince you can actually make them spend an extra also yes i understand <laughs> the click of that moment that they trust you and they will spend because we are talking of a field where you know uh, people want luxury and now if i speak of luxury today it has become the need correct absolutely it's more a luxury luxury it is more, more of a lifestyle yeah luxury i understood so, you know it's about how you convince and how you portray your designs with them and they can correlate and then spend on it so the value for money comes right i understood so chandrika one question to you so uh, have you uh, like ram sharma ji if you still have query you can put it forward in to us in the chat box otherwise most of uh, uh, most of them believe that budget and value for money comes much more before the quality and the durability and the material select selection because once the budget is finalized once the person is clear about how much he wants to spend only then the material selection or the furniture selection comes in now coming on to chandrika chandrika yes. one question very important uh, okay ram ji agrees that it, uh, it is the value for money so thank you ram uh thanks a lot so chandrika one important thing now that uh, the changes globally as you mentioned earlier is so fast paced you know we are changing so so fast every day there are technological changes in every field every day there are changes in the options available every day there are changes in the expertise available now if all that is correct then how are you coping up with the you know client expectations uh, uh, like you know do you see that um, you also have to keep updating yourself all the time of course of course you have to be up with what is happening in the world what materials are there what technology what uh, construction uh, technologies are there and in yeah. fact it is i think our duty as architects to inform because you are there representing the client to tell them that this these are the 10000 things that are available in the market but you have to also understand their requirements say that from this this works for you and these are the options a b c this is the price budget this is what it is it because this is our field this is our uh, speciality so we are definitely up to date on what is happening here and right. at the same time we are bridging the gap of what works for them so have you like are you taking help from online sources for this uh, continuous ongoing learning or what are you doing for it are you attending some specific conferences are you attending some specific webinars or you are reading yourself through various online libraries how are you like kind of managing it or do you have contacts who are helping you out uh, with constant sources of learning i think it's i would say all of them because it's constant learning as you said very rightly so you are reading you are attending events a lot of uh, events in the architecture fraternity where you keep uh, abreast with the materials that are there and they have their presentations they of course come to our offices and also have presentations but further to that we have uh, monthly workshops in our own office so even the team and the staff we keep uh, talking about what it is and how we can connect it so not just what they've learned in college or with their bridging projects we connect the dots with the materials available so there are a lot of sessions like this uh, in house as well as outside that we do uh, because like you said constant learning <laughs> yeah absolutely i understand now here don't you face the challenge that when a uh, you know vendor may be procuring hundreds of items from different materials different kinds of countries and different kinds of he may be importing lot of stuff and you know they could be very unique in themselves but uh, he may not be able to update you every time okay not come across that uh, so far because yes they are they are also constantly in touch with us with what is coming in so we keep, keep understanding we keep going to going, okay. to going and seeing materials we keep understanding and today like you said youtube links you can see how it's factually made and how it is done so okay. that connectivity is there i mean i don't think there is such a gap in the industry on that front 
Okay, very nice. So, uh, Dr. Sangeeta, uh, what is uh, just one very important these days? People are shifting to a lot of, lot of uh, colors, you know, a uh, lot of uh, eclectic colors. So, what is your say in that? I mean, colors do they play important role for well-being, happiness? Of course, they do. But the bright colors may not be liked by everyone. So, how do you like define how much? pastels how much bright so uh, design plays a very significant role in which room bright in which room colors you know because do you also uh, discuss with the client that who are the occupants of that room and you know you discuss all this that who is going to occupy that room what is going to be the actual use of that room sometimes a client may like to use a room for multiple reasons so how would you decide on a color quotient or aesthetic quotient of that room it comes very clear you know your space is your personality so yes for example if you would just walk into my office or an area you would know that you know sangeeta behaves like this so this is particular what she would actually possess a we always go psychologically with you know the kind of environment the client is living yeah. in you know the kind of usage they would have in it surely colors play important role um uh, personally um uh, i always feel you know we are like guiding uh souls with them they come up that they want to use a red color and we as professionals are very clear you use a red color but add a tinge of black so that that goes more in a better situation so i think okay. this is where we pay, play our expertise so okay. whatever they give us we listen to them we try and use them because ultimately they have to use the spaces so we don't say no no to anything and we don't even say yes to everything okay so, we have to be like you know very practical in using both the things and then give them the best and colors are something which i personally feel you know you should they create your motion they create your ambience everything is done but they should be in form of home furnishings which okay. can be changed when you want to rather than you know having fixed wall solid colors okay so i think that does the trick with them right sure so um any more questions anybody has with respect to design uh, planning part of it and artifacts art from the audience uh, you can pen them down meanwhile uh, coming to the education policy changes that uh, you know our country is currently uh, you know the decisions have been taken about the new education policy so here i would like to ha have inputs from dr uh, dr nancy and dr munish but how do you think a uh, new education policy is uh, you know helping people uh, of india i mean is going to help the future generation which is going to be uh, you know taking up architecture as a core subject or any vocational courses related to design related to related to maybe art artistry so what role will the new education policy play if dr nancy or dr munish can take up this question yes i am very much here but i would really love to have a uh, you know viewpoint from dr nancy here okay. because it's all of the power of a women then then i uh, i would to do share my two cents because i'm not that knowledgeable as uh, samriti malhotra ji or chandrika sahaye ji or geeta hoja ji but I'd love to hear from dr nancy if we can have dr nancy here dr nancy meja yeah sure she's here yeah no. yes yeah, sure Wonderful. thanks indeed it has been a really nice listening to everyone so deep knowledge and uh, thank you so much uh, shantika sai ji smriti and uh, dr sangeeta uh, so as you said yes uh, you know a very important point has been raised uh, i being from the um, i'll say being in education since two decades uh, i feel fortunate that after 34 years uh, we have created a revolution uh, with nep 2020 where creativity is back uh, on stage you know up stage we always wanted uh, you know the focal point to be on the creative side to explore uh, you know the untapped potential of the individual not just you know making them bookworm and uh, you know taking uh, aspects of all the facets of life and definitely as you rightly said i feel with the more focus on uh, new education policy in 2020 on vocational courses on creativity it is laid down that we don't have to be just uh, you know aiming to be probably uh, doctors pilots educationists and so on and so forth which was uh, you know a bygone 
and now is the time when uh, people like you it is amazed to see the correlation between all the three you know as rightly put by a very dear friend of mine smriti you know there is a, a hand to hand collaboration between all of you three when one when one starts the other one joins and the uh, third one takes part if that happens if we have these all three c's one creativity second collaboration and third critical thinking as how we can collaborate together it's a win win situation for be it any profession be it architect be it any domain area that we talk about here interiors or to go into it integrities any any profession so i feel yes it plays a very important role rather i request uh, all this team panelists uh, you know uh, the chairperson of metrics women dr sangeeta as well as our esteemed panelists to make sure that how we can put forward uh, you know interior and architect into mainstream as rightly started by dr jindal uh, you know mentorx uh, you know the vision of mentorx is empowering elevating and educating the youth and in our respective fields we are doing amazing work in uh, last two decades but with collaboration not within uh, five months uh, it's amazing expansion that we are uh, you know uh, planning to uh, go on board with mentorx school of learning so mm -hmm. my request to all of you that with all the subjects that we mentioned we want interiors we want architect we want everything that you guys are doing to be on the top notch field so when the you know the student might think after plus two level or after professional courses to uh, you know choose interior as a field they should probably think in the elementary education too as rightly said by dr sangeeta you know interior is something which comes by passion so the child doesn't know and i'm sure with each of you you doesn't know all of a sudden after you know your plus 2 or graduation that yes i want to do this and i'm passionate about it we can tell the child also to start sketching from that age it, it might happen that they come out out of blue with flying colors and they are passionate about it so let's think over it that how your profession can be on papers in collaboration like you know as we have already mentioned nap 2020 let's focus there as an educational style lead everyone to make this as mandatory for all the students from formative years that imaginative skills creative skills, skills and as collaborative skills how about team effort like you guys are saying can we have one task given to all creative task that three four people has to do together what a beauty and what a better word we'll create if we can you know make this happen that, that's what i want to contribute over to you dr jindal hello yeah you're audible i feel we can move uh, ahead as uh, this video is stopped okay uh, so waiting for dr manish to join back uh, meanwhile i would like to ask uh, chandrika and smriti that how uh, how the present uh, day colleges or institutions or maybe online education pro programs or such platforms such as mentorx can really help you know in developing those vocational skills in people so that in your field particularly so that you know they are better groomed as professionals in the field of architecture and planning and artistry and interior designing and luxury designing so if you could throw some light chandrika so uh, i think there's lots happening like as nancy said in the field and there's lots you can bring in but at the end of the day our field is still a very apprenticeship based firm a field sorry and therefore anyone who comes from the colleges they've learned the theories but you have to get your hands dirty in a project to understand uh, how it all ties up together so i, I mean there are a lot of people having a different you know trainings and all that uh, coming in so it can't be just a theory it can't be it has to have a fusion of both so even if, i don't know how nancy would be better able to tell how you can translate that online to even hands on working in a project okay sure it's a very good point because in our times also in every respective field we used to have that on the job training or internship kind of a thing which was a practical experience for students now uh, smriti any any points from you on this question yeah uh, so uh, as chandrika really pointed out right now <clears throat> i think nep 2020 uh, really focuses on the formative years of any child 
and i remember from my own field i am a drastic uh, shift person from a absolutely non art field to an art field so because i think a lot uh, you know kind of really goes in when you get the exposure early in life the exposure itself in the typical cbse mode is not there as of now now yeah. the changes are existing and in a lot of yeah. exposure has also come from a lot of social media and parents yeah. also being got aware but then i think initially when we guys were growing up there was no exposure per se only four five lines were the only lines that we had to choose from and though other lines still existed very much as still like this houses were still being made designers were still there art was still being done but you know the more emphasis on was on the usage of your left brain not on the right brain where we all know but the memory or the decisions have to be balanced between both the brains now i think we are giving them a platform where we can actually give them exposure for both the things we are not pushing them for uh, picking design as a field they, they might still as will go for becoming a doctor but then they still have the exposure right in the early stage and then a more uh, well you know exposed uh, decision can be taken by them in the plus 2 as to what they want to do so you very rightly it's bit i was talking about more college and after but very rightly like said in school i remember we art is always a subject that we have you know art class yes. jaate the and then yes. suddenly there is a gap from your 9th 10th to 12th when you're just studies you to you know you have to get your board results and at least that was it and then you come back to college if you take art and architecture you to suddenly start drawing and sketching live buildings or you know right. doing human portraits and you so there there was a little hesitance because the continuation the continuity was not there so definitely in this regard uh, it's a big positive thing move that people who are in the creative fields or who you know anyone else be it anything else even engineer you can get to potter around with your hands on these educational courses true so do you think these uh, online learning modules and uh, you know diy programs and these youtube videos and online things do you think these learning tools have added to that though you may not get the direct hands on experience but do you think these things have added up somewhere because i see uh, little children uh, you know doing lots of diy things with the help of these all online uh, modules and online learning tools even i see people getting their coding classes for app development and things like that so what is the role these online tools are playing today now that we are in a situation which is a challenging health situation in globally so do you think this is helping us uh, to go nearer to our learning goals in a much better way i would i would like to answer this from my personal experience during the lockdown i picked up couple of master classes that i attended online short ones and uh, it is really a definitely good tool for even us professionals not i am talk, not talking about students for upgrading yes. the skills as you just said that you know how do you really be abreast and picking up new things so that the offerings to the client ultimately can be something which is uh more fresh and dynamic uh having said that i think even in the schools still there is a gap what you're taught in the college i think still primarily is lot more theoretical and okay. there's a huge gap when you suddenly join uh you know a uh, final uh you know any of these offices or organizations you really feel that what's been taught and what's actually going to be implemented there is a gap i think uh, uh i'm not though very clear about how mentorx is going to take about it but that's a huge gap can actually be filled with giving lot of uh, you know kind of emphasis on the practical aspects and filling in that void and gap so i would request uh, dr sangeeta to uh, guide us through or dr manish also basically uh, i would like to understand that how can a, an individual or a student or a college student or a junior or a young child you know can be paved through mentorx training programs or training modules and how can his career design be rightly modulated in the right direction so that he picks up a job so that he picks up a profession so that it becomes successful as an individual so dr sangeeta and dr munish i would like uh, both of you to please guide us through uh, let's hear from dr sangeeta then uh, whatever i be able to i will share i would love to hear dr sangeeta yes you know when we are discussing this point um, what our concentration is on the practical aspect of what you've learned and how you've implemented implemented on this now as a professional you hire me but you don't know what you need the best out of me so what we are trying that that gap bridge which is coming between me and the client also really needs to go to that student who's learning the process of becoming a designer or a architect or a artist anything should learn the basics first 
let in into the field that what they want to actually learn about so right. the curriculums are going to revolve more about our expertise and what is actually needed and the traditional what we've been taught so that the blend comes out to be you know what is needed and they come out as good professionals right so uh, munish would you like to put some uh, light on this yeah surely i'd love to share my bar it's uh, you know the advantage of speaking at the end is like there is not much left as all the learner the wonderful the remarkable uh, beautiful women out here sumriti ji chandrika ji and sangeeta ji and obviously dr nancy they have covered so much but yes i would really love to share see as i uh, pick up from where sumriti ji left about uh, you know the diy things where that you learn online that's true there are so many online tools you can learn but still i will always emphasize you always need a mentor take an example i still play golf right i love to play golf and i try to learn it online it tells me what a fairway is what a ball is what a club is but it still that isn't t- telling me which angle i have to twist my uh, arm at you know Very right. my how to hold a club so for that you need a mentor so imagine take it this way to someone watching a course online or someone physically learning it right directly from spriti ma'am or chandrika ma'am or sangeeta ma'am interiors that individual would be very well placed and that is what where mentrex is kicking in what we are doing is we have very we have launched various module i will uh, we today we are talking about interiors and design so i will talk specifically talk about that only we have design thinking we have interior designing architecture art uh, under the able leadership of dr sangeeta hoja so what we are doing is they will learn their basics from there on and imagine then providing them the internship with any of them with smriti ma'am with chandrika ma'am or dr sangeet at urban interiors and then we have 200 more than 250 various different mentors from various different fields in 32 countries imagine if someone just wants to crack their design part maybe the art part how they have to design it we have nora vision sitting in slovenia right and the, those guys they are even using ai in the art artificial intelligence so getting your internship done there getting back by all the big names you resume having a name of mentorx name of urban interiors and respective com- uh, companies of smriti ma'am and chandrika ma'am and then maybe nora vision kicking in from slovenia and same way we from various different countries imagine that individual uh, what kind of worth he or she commands in the market obviously firms architecture firms interior designing firms they would want it or they can start their operations independently that is what when i said that mentorx educate empower elevate we are not talking about education what is a what is 1 plus 1 we are breaking the traditional barriers in the whatever our education system where it is lacking it is a jo though nep has come the nep 2020 and when people say the government has launched new nep i i would really want to say that it is not the government who has brought the nep it is the people like us people like you who are the torch bearers who are the heart bearers of change cause time and again over and again when you've been working through it you had urged the government had to change it because this is the need of the and so yes obviously nep is going to be better than before till it is again bound with those traditional barriers where our age old system is stuck so their mentor x uh, banking on the shoulder of all of you is bringing that much required change giving them the basics making them the pro getting them vouched by the international companies certificates letter of recommendations and there you go you can be the job creators rather than thinking of working you can start your own operations and when you would be backed by see well, under smriti ma'am or chandrika or sangeeta ma'am imagine it it would be continuous learning process you know they are get bagging their projects they are doing that and along with they have their mentor sitting you always need a mentor until unless you are a, maybe i don't know a person like me who is learning from his struggles i have learned everything hard way very hard way my mentrex is my ninth venture in past 24 it's been 24 years i've been working and it's my ninth venture so i have learned things hard way so th- this is a, like a first hand things i have learned so that is why i urge people join hands together learn from others if you want to go the hard way it is going to be a long way obviously you're going to learn it is going to take long time if you're going to set on a beautiful journey then join hands and we are blessed that we all are together and as chandrika uh, chandrika sahai ma'am right in the, the beginning itself talking about education there is uh, uh, education in the interiors so i urge her itself that why don't you why don't smriti ma'am and uh, sangeeta ma'am be the pioneers of the change bring that much required change i am the kind of the person who says that be the change that you want to see bring that change. 
and if I could support anywhere, uh, we are always there. And I really remember talking about, you know, the new classical era of the architecture we dated back to 2500 BC. I certain times get to read about Neolithical age that was dated back to 10,000 BC and where we have come up to your you know, to today, the geometric designs, the modern era, the automations, the, um, the contemporary art. So it has come a long way, long way. And the change has been brought right by the people like you. And then uh, obviously Sangeeta may mentioned rightly that you the architecture should be practical. And I am little annoyed today with Sandeeta ma'am that why she didn't meet me 15 years ago when in 2005, <laughs> I started my construction of my home. You know, this was the first point I was talking to my architecture that you want to make the designs, you're going to make the drawings, but it is up to me whether I'm going to implement it or not. Because you are going to make the drawings, but I have to live. I need a practicality. So I'm so glad that uh, Chandrika ma'am, Smriti ma'am and Sangeeta ma'am, they are understanding that deep rooted thing that, okay, the client has, who has to live there, the design should be functional and practical according to them. So this is much needed, you know, that uh, the design's functionality should blend with customer need. And obviously when I left my home, I had a few pieces of interior, few pieces of furniture that needed to be blended with the, uh, my new geometrical interiors and my architecture will throw away everything. And I said, no, few things are close to my heart. I don't want to throw them away. Then I myself worked upon it, made it blend with my house interiors. But um, I am blessed that today's generation, they have uh, such, you know, able leaders, such pioneers, such uh, visionaries like Smriti ma'am, Chandrika ma'am and Sangeeta ma'am, that uh, the future is in wonderful, beautiful hands. So thank you for um, all of you for being here. And I'm sure we are going to bring that much required change that the contemporary world is looking for. Thank you so much. Um, if I, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Jindal. I mean, for a, a, having us on this platform, but B, to share your vision, because I completely agree with you that this mentorship, I mean, if there's someone guiding you who has gone through what they have, you, I mean, it helps you overcome that obstacle less, lot less easier. You know, you have that backing. And I think that's something all of us need in as, as a society and a human to support each other and take us each through our different obstacles we face. They may be, it's, it's very personal to everyone, but when you have a mentor, you have someone guiding you who's gone through that thing before, it's a lot easier. And of course, we're there because having gone through, we're there to support and you encourage more people to come forward. And I was, I mean, one of the points is like, it's not just the aptitude that you have, but the attitude that you have towards your work that really, really matters. Yeah. Thank you. And I'm, I'm blessed that uh, we are in the same. And you know, the, the point that you mentioned, that the person who has rightly gone through it, oh wow, that touched my heart. You know, my co-founder, uh, Dr. Nancy Juneja, sometimes we agree to disagree because she says there are so many coaches in the industry. And you know what the first question I ask her is, tell me which coach, give me one name of one coach who has been an entrepreneur, who has gone through that, whatever he or she is teaching, who has gone through that, then I will come to it. So hmm. I say the real coach, real mentor would be the person who has gone through, who has lived through that journey. So that is why when, when I say mentor, it's just close to 250 mentors on board. Why? Hmm. You can ask me, okay, Dr. Jindal could do everything. I have started, uh, done nine ventures. No, I have done nine ventures in my life. So I could be specialized in only on those nine domains. But what about interiors? I am not closely related to that. So there, mm -hmm. we need people like you. And then if so someone, no offense to anyone, if someone says, oh, I'm a coach on interiors. Sorry, I need people like Spriti Memar, Chandrika Memar, Sangeeta Memar, who are living that life every day, each hour, who are so yeah. passionate about work. So we mm -hmm. need people like them. They can be the, they are the real coach. They are the mentor. So that is why we never use a word coach in our industry. We are talking mentors. Mentors are the people who have lived that life lived that life and who had been passionate for that. And that is and my passion. I've never, never been an educationist, if you ask me. It is my passion, my learning, my lifelong learning, my expertise that brought me into it. And it could be only 24 years I'm working and it could be another maybe 25 years or 24 years for Smriti Ma'am, Chandrika Ma'am or Sangeeta Ma'am. But you know what I say? That Smriti Ma'am or Chandrika Ma'am and Sangeeta Ma'am, they are to maybe thousand different people. Then they meet them. When they talk to them, when they together share the thought process behind them they carry a legacy of thousand years of expertise because it is not only the 24 years they have worked it is the experience they have gained by sitting together by talking by sharing the thought process with others so you are carrying a legacy Absolutely. of years. each individual who has rightly gone through that process he or she
he's carrying a legacy of thousand more than thousand years. When more than those thousand years club together, goes and uh, work for one youth or multiple youth together, it is going to bring that change. It is the need of the hour. And that is where we are working together. And I'm glad that we are together and we're sharing today this. Thank you for winning my heart with that just one single line when you mentioned that the right person is who has gone through that. That is what I live for. Thank you. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you. On a lighter note, I think uh, <laughs> ko pani ke liye bhi aapko ek guru ki zarurat hoti hai. So <laughs> you need somebody to, you know, who's already walked that path to guide you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I would like to, uh, here I would like to add that uh, I have never seen God, but I see him through you. So yeah. for me, that divine exists within you. So whenever, whenever uh, people like the wonderful, remarkable, incredible people like you join forces, I feel, feel the divine has joined the forces, the divine has joined the hands. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, all of you. It was very insightful to hear all three of you here. And uh, you have given us so much insight into the field of architecture, planning, design, and, you know, artistry. So I'm very, very thankful to each one of you. And it's been a really nice knowing each one of you here on this platform. Thank you so much, Dr. Sangeeta, for this opportunity and for introducing me to Spriti and to Chandrika as well. And a big hello to Erwin also because I've mentioned to him that I spoke to Chandrika today. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, he messaged me. He messaged you. <laughs> so nice. Thank you all of you. And uh, from this, I would like to hand over to Dr. Sangeeta and Dr. Munish to take it forward from here. Thank you so much, Neeru, for your kind word. You've been really humble in handling everything so smoothly. Thank you so much. Thank you. I think uh, Dr. Jindal now... Uh, Platforms again back to you. Thank you, Dr. Singita. And yes, a very humble, heartfelt gratitude to uh, Miss Neeru Sood for being here, for uh, handling the such a, you know, I would say this, this was a very intellectual and very deep session. And uh, it is only a person of the caliber of uh, Miss Neeru Sood. Yes. Who such a wonderful session. Because uh, this, uh, this, certain, this, this is a niche domain. And we need niche people like Neeru Sudh who can handle such domains. So I'm glad. And I would urge all of you, you know, uh, uh, that uh, not much, at least plan such some maybe once every quarter or so. And maybe we could talk more deeply about the architecture, more medieval times or the European art. The, mm. the, because that is much need of the art. And maybe you share your designs as well, what you're making happen and how from the right from the Neolithic age back in the 10,000 BC the where in the 21st century, in 2020, the art has come to. Hmm. How beautifully it has evolved, the journey. When you will share, you know, people will get connected deeply. Because I can still see, if, if, I, if I talk about my great-grandparents, the kind of havelis or the forts they own, the kind of homes we are living in, where we are just, I'm, I'm just, you know, clicking a button on my cell phone, where my aircons are on, or my bulbs, where as soon as I walk in my room, they see me and they turn on. So how beautifully the things have evolved. I would really love all of you to share that and inspire the youth. Because um, this is a niche domain and we, need, we really need more people. And when those, uh, the, you know, the young blood, the upcoming generations, they will join hands with the people like you. The, the, uh, the wonderful people like you, I call them the torch bearers that you be, have, hold the torch for the change. So, and what best could be that these torch bearers are so beautiful and so with, with such smiling faces, spreading happiness around. So, you know, you're a complete package. You're so gifted. So that, that is the beauty. You're so gifted that along uh, uh, learnings, there's happiness around. So that's the beauty of all of you. I so think, that's, uh, <laughs> yeah, I want please. to add here. Uh, yes. Today is the actual introduction class for the women Mentrix team entering into the real work mode now. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm literally, literally blessed that we are together, though I don't know, the certain times uh, uh, with so many beautiful women around, uh, uh, women around, I feel a little out of place that I don't know, you or you women might be thinking what this gentleman is doing among us, but here, <laughs> 
um i i i just try to share my thought process with the, all of you so thank you for being here and i hope we would be able to do these uh, such kind of summits maybe bi monthly maybe once in two months or once in a quarter because this is much needed and this is how uh, mentorx women also will take shape when we're talking about interiors that's right you are the people who belong to this um, uh, wonderful domain that is your expertise but when you women you form your own tribe you know that is what the mentrix the, the vision of mentrix women is cause okay you might be thinking you're working in interiors imagine tomorrow you could be the uh, you know the professors of design thinking delivering guest lectures in various universities i i had been i am a commerce graduate i make robots i had no nothing to do with the robots in with my early formative years of education i did my mba in finance then i studied mba psychology then i did chartered accountancy then i did phd in artificial intelligence and robotics because uh, artificial intelligence was always my passion the uh, technology but then now i have been delivering uh, sessions in various universities top universities in india and in the world we even have our business incubation center in mauritius that was established with the call of president so that is what i am seeing in all of you that tomorrow you could be the different professors of design thinking of interior of art in various universities or maybe or maybe on a platform like mentorx and not just this imagine connecting with the women across the world um, like i already said there is some another women who has brought ai in the art imagine mm. all we bringing various different things collaborating together that is what Men mentorx uh, women is doing that is why i said global solidarity sisterhood that is what you unite together be the sisters with each other and there you go so on that note i am hopeful we have much more this today's session was just an introduction what these wonderful beautiful women can do they not only dress nicely they they uh, their, their mindset is even nicer and <laughs> they don't they don't they don't only dress colorfully i would say they don't only wear that colorful makeup though they are the rainbows of the life they spread beautiful colors in their life so each one of you you hold a different color you know a rainbow color i say when people ask me okay what is a different color i say that's a rainbow color i i can only see colors in the rainbow form so each one of you hold that rainbow color in your hand so keep spreading that and keep sharing that with each one around each one of you when i was hearing you you know i was getting goosebumps i was getting excited each one of you have that that expertise that knowledge and uh, when when uh, when we meet an interior designer we have a notion okay a woman may be in a power suit sitting in her office with a paper and a pencil but when each one of you when chandrika ma'am was talking about education when smriti ma'am was talking about you know new classical era or when sangeeta ma'am was talking about blending in wow wow and the government is now adopting or uh, what uh, ugc is now adopting that flipped learning or blended learning which already you are practicing from years so wonderful and i'm glad that we all have joined hands together joined the forces and this all of you are the clan you are the clan i'm just the face i can just talk good sitting over here but the practical work has to be done by all of you so i hope we are in sync and on that note i have just a very little token of uh, you know love and appreciation for all of you though we are sitting at home we cannot do much but um, a little token of appreciation i would really love to share with all and hopefully the first one i is for uh, miss neeru sood thank you so much with my folded hands and my the soul within me honors the soul within you a little token of uh, appreciation and love from our side thank you so much nancy and munish thank you and once the once the real world uh, gears up once the real world opens up <laughs> we are going to do uh, do this summit for real whereby all of you are going to be part of it and it is going to be done on your shoulders okay. and then thank you uh, mrs smriti arora mahota again with folded hands the soul thank within you. me honors the soul within you thank you thank you, thank you. we are indeed grateful for you to spare your valuable time and thank, thank you for being with us thank you thank you ma'am thank you It much more we are looking to work much more much more with you miss chandrika sahai wow wow Thank so you. Thanks to you, ma'am. Thank you. My folded hands. Thank you to Thank you, and for being with us. And we are looking for much more with you. And then, last but not the least, the, the strength pillar, the way we this uh, mentorx women banks upon Dr. Sangeeta Hoja. She is no speaker. She is no guest. She is an uh, integral part of mentorx as well as mentorx women. And she is the one, um, you know, who is the innovator of the thought process. she brings in new thought processes in mentorx and she makes it happen 
and we are blessed uh, that uh, today um, she made this happen though she we, we, we should be giving her the certificate because we believe dr sangeeta hosa is the one who should who is giving certificate to others but still again with my folding hands dr sangeeta hosa thank you a little token of appreciation and love thank you she is a pillar of very big strengths for everyone. yes indeed indeed she is she she is uh, and i think very uh, very contagious too she's uh, <laughs> of some epidemics also <laughs> wow wow wonderful so i'm so happy that uh, yeah. uh, not only men women are also in love with sangeeta ma'am i don't know sangeeta ma'am see your charm around that, that's uh, a good one than... i love i love to put a point here as uh, yes, dr jindal said women are also in love with dr sangeeta hoja very rightly put together <laughs> i'll say a girl can be envious of one another but a woman cannot be a woman knows what yeah. it brings yes. to come on the board and to yes. manage each and everything and hats off yeah. to her who is not just representing herself as a you know uh, a representative of the entire women clan here mm -hmm. but uh, she's been an indispensable support for many women which is rarely found in today's world so mm -hmm. hats off to you dr sangeeta hoja and uh, indeed pleasure you yeah. know having mentor x women led by you indeed mm -hmm. uh, you know great to see each one thriving not just surviving and thanks to uh, neeru ma'am and everyone here i'll say how because uh, you have been spreading good vibes by the session during the tough times because it has been just uh, focusing upon adversity and challenges but you guys have just raised the bar in talking about beauty interiors which were uh, we're sitting here i'm also you know visualizing about my new bent of place where well, we i'll be contacting you so thank you so much thank you so much thank you for your answers for kind words Thank you. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you so much. Indeed, lovely to have you all. Pleasure so was all ours, and meeting such lovely people. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Do you remember? Uh, uh, I would be really closing on the note that we feel privileged and honored that we have such beautiful, wonderful. You know, when the beauty with the brains come on board. it's a complete package in itself and any organization would love to have that so we are blessed we are privileged that uh, neeru ma'am chandrika ma'am sangeeta ma'am or i won't count sangeeta ma'am sangeeta ma'am is also <laughs> so chandrika ma'am neeru ma'am and smriti ma'am they have joined forces today they have joined the hands today i have been uh, literally watching a uh, you know series person of interest they are using such words like forces intel so i don't know from three four days watching so i'm just using these words that so join join the forces so thank you for being with us if before leaving and i would really like to acknowledge anju kumari ji anju kumari ji is also a wonderful part of mentorx and we regard her and hold her in a uh, very high regards and we are blessed that she joined today as an audience she might be thinking but i really want to clarify she is not an audience for us she is also very important and integral part of uh, mentorx and we are launching many life skills as well as very domain modules with anju kumari ji which i think we didn't convey to her uh, before but we had been working on this from past two weeks so i thought this today is a wonderful day to convey this as well life to her that uh, we are working hand in hand with anju kumari wonderful thank you, thank you so much uh, dr manish and thanks a lot dr ansi for that mention by and large when everyone was talking about uh, dr sangeeta being the magnet it's all because of her love that i joined the session today though architect and interior design is not my passion and not my interest but all that interest is being pulled by virtue of dr sangeeta so you know i am sitting mm -hmm. here all through that i think one one and a half hours that you know often on the screen but i've been very clearly listening to all that is being talked about such a interesting session and uh, neeru made it seamlessly very interactive and uh, it was you know she was making it so interesting uh, if not neeru i do not know who would have made it that interesting you know i i really uh, appreciate her as well see you here yeah thanks a lot thank you so much thank you so before we 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 close and i'm glad that uh, yes anju kumari ji came on the mic and spoke few words so she is another lover of uh, dr sangeeta ji dr sangeeta mohan <laughs> guys i believe they are in love with you right <laughs> so and anju ji you know i'm glad that you shared your two cents yes neeru ji coming back to you but i'm glad that uh, you shared your two 
sense that architecture is not related to you, but you sit by here. So here again, there is a good point. Even if the field is not concerned to you, sit there. You will get lots to learn. You will get lots to learn out of it. You know. So listen to it. And I would really like to acknowledge. Uh, we have another wonderful guest with us, uh, Miss Varsha Jain. She is an international jewelry designer. See again, the designer. Like you guys, you guys design interior. She designs jewelry. So again, a blending moment wherever we we can join. Um, her intellect with us. She's always a part of it. So we are blessed that Dr. Varsha, uh, Miss Varsha Jain is with us. Thank you. And yes, now back to Neeru ji. She raised uh, when I talked about a love, girly love for Sangeeta ji. She raised her hand. <laughs> <laughs> no, not a girly love. <laughs> yes, <Neeru. laughs> no, I don't know. Whenever there, whenever I see Sangeeta ji, lot many women around, and they are madly in love with Sangeeta ji. So I'm so happy, glad to see that. Wonderful to know that. So I hope we all are happy, and on a happy note, we conclude this. And yes. thank you. So wish you a wonderful week ahead. Stay happy, stay safe, and enjoy your life. And wherever, thank you so much. wherever you feel, Mentor X or me being the founding president or Dr. Nancy, Sangeeta Hujja, ma'am. Whoever we could be of any help, we are available 24x7. I don't know about others, but I'm available 24x7. I sleep alternative nights for three hours. Some of <laughs> over. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.